Okay, here we go. Our next guest is a no, <laughs> he's a no stranger to our set. <laughs> <laughs> or many sets for that All matter. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, actor Victor Cruz. I, yeah, yeah. Careers. Well, let, let's get straight for a minute, All right. right? All right. So, what actor Victor Cruz is. Like, yeah, okay. well, he, well, you know, you guys want to know about his career because I want to know about his career. It began, uh, well, with two TV appearances on The Sopranos. And, well, some of his TV and film credits include well, well known projects as. Kimmy Schmidt, Blue Bloods, House of Cards, and The Humbling with Al Pacino. And now he has his own acting studio and he has a recurring role on the new Netflix hit show, The Good Cop with Tony Danza and Josh Groban. We're going to take a sneak peek of that and we're going to get straight when we come back. <laughs> All right, let's go, people. Already, I think the Vic is a pretty big fish. Serato Hollow Point, the second one today. Lieutenant, you're going to want to see this. How you doing, guys? What's happening? Hey, son of mine. Dad. How's it going? You can't bring a civilian to an active crime scene. Uh, come on, son. I mean, she's not exactly a civilian. I mean, look at her. How you doing? I'm Tony Caruso. You're the detective that did seven years upstate. I was kind of a naughty cop. We laugh about that all the time. <laughs> they love him. They don't have to live with him. Anthony, your old man said you're the best detective in the city. I told him everything I know. Uh, except right from wrong. That I learned on my own. You break one rule, they all break. You ever wonder why you're not invited to more parties? I've been watching you two. The bantering, the teasing. It's obviously a deep form of affection. It's very sexual. Oh. <laughs> oh I, I don't know. I probably yeah. not. A cop's being killed up there on the lift. The Neptune Hotel. One of the guests was shot. Dr. Kornbluth just posted the autopsy. I can't see it from here, right? Is that better? There's one thing every good detective knows. What's that? It's 6 o'clock. I'll tell you tomorrow. These cop retreats are a blast. Ethics in modern police work. You signed me up to speak? It wasn't easy getting you on that panel. I had to slip the organizer a little do re me. You bribed a guy to get me on the ethics panel? Cost me 50 bucks. You be pro, I'll be con. You see what happens when you play by the rules? Excuse me. Well, is everything okay? It's my father. So, no. You're my son again. <laughs> I didn't want to tell you before, but earlier today I disowned you. I can't wait to tell the guys. Oh, you're all right. And joining us to tell us more about his new role in the uh, Netflix series, The Good Cop, along with his upcoming season of Victor Cruz Acting Studio, we welcome actor, teacher, filmmaker, and Rena Valentine wannabe, Victor Cruz. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you for having me on your show. This is awesome. And thank you for letting me open up for you. Oh. I, just, I felt like you. I had, you know, just felt like I could be Rena Valentine. So fabulous. Well, I figured we'd start, you know, exercising in, at the top of the mm. segment. However, I want to congratulate you on this new recurring role. It's a very interesting Thank series. Um, let's talk a little bit about that before we get into the acting methods of Victor Cruz acting yeah, studio. For sure, really, really exciting. The Good Cop is a great show. It's from the same makers of Monk. So if you're a big fan of Monk, you're going to love The Good Cop. Uh, I play a recurring character called Sergeant Rudner on the show. Um, it's just been a lot of fun. Um, it's, it's a laid-back environment when we were shooting the show, and... Um, You'll see, you'll see all that stuff. So sort of I, I watched a few episodes mm -hmm. and um, I find it, um, it's kind of interesting, the show, because mm -hmm. it's a, there's a fine line between the comedy aspect of it yeah. and the, the, I guess, the suspension of belief in certain scenarios. Sure. Um, and, and then, of course, I got to see you come in and out, you know, mm -hmm. and be this kind of like comical cop. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody here, what's, uh, this one has like impediments. Um, Josh Groban, uh, mm -hmm. he's a, uh, is he OCD? Is that what that is? You like, know, what is that? It's interesting. I think he's just like another version of Monk. I, you know, he's, he has a bit of OCD, but he's by the book. And that, that's why it's such a funny show, because it's a big contrast to Tony Danza's character, who plays his father on the show, who's sort of Considered a dirty cop, he wasn't such a great cop in his time, served time in prison, so now they live together and have to deal with each other, and so it, 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 it's a good opposition that makes for good comedy, 
but they still allow some of the dramatic stuff to still live there. So it's not all silly all the time. No, it isn't. It, it was fun. Yeah. I, was, I was enjoying watching it, and, and it was really refreshing to see Tony Danza because, you know, I mean, no me importa que está viejo, todavía está rico. No, listen, that guy, the guy is solid, man. <laughs> uh, listen, I remember I came in, I gave him a hug during one of the last shoots, and when I hugged him, I mean, he's, <laughs> his muscles are tight, you know? It's just like, wow, you... <laughs> It's, I, I'm the old guy here. You, you young man. And you know, I also love that they incorporated his boxing history into That's his right. character. That's right. I love that. Yep. So it's still there, and there's that truth aspect of it, and and there's relations to other boxers. Um, I, you know, I saw that one particular episode where the guy escaped from jail, and yep. um, and he had to dress like a woman, hang out in <laughs> in his basement, <laughs> and and his son is like, oh, they're misplacing his glasses to try. <laughs> They're right. looking for the guy that's living in in their basement, dressed like yes. a woman, yes. and so it's just all that the, the storyline and the way they they're telling the story is very fascinating. I've never seen it before. Mm -hmm. I've never seen it done, and but I, I guess that's why you opened up with it, the, it's created by the creators of Monk. Yeah, and if you look at that show, that was very serious, but then it had some really silly moments, you know. But then still brought you back to that dramatic, you know, area. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So how's that been working uh, uh, with Tony Danza and Josh Groban? It's great. Uh, Tony is super down to earth, humble. He's like an uncle. Call him Uncle Tony. Josh Groban's super duper nice guy. I mean, everybody you see on the show is very humble, down to the ground, and, and that know, was very helpful. Yes, and that's what I love about you, just in general as a person, is you're, you're that you're so humble. I mean, you go and you work with all these celebrities. I know you've worked with Cameron Diaz. I mean, you've worked with Al Pacino, and uh, you know yeah. it doesn't get any more humbling than that. And 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 yet you've chosen to find a way to pay it forward and pass it forward with mm -hmm. this new uh, acting studio. Well, it's not new, but now you're really going in full force yeah. because I know you've been teaching and coaching on the side yeah. for quite some time now. So let's talk about that. Yeah, so, you know, I started officially teaching in 2011. Before that, I was helping friends and people that I knew prepare for auditions or just work with them <laughs> on, on new material that they were developing. It was during that time that I thought, you know, I could, I think I can teach. And then I held a free workshop where I wasn't even sure who would show up. Instagram, uh, Twitter wasn't even out then. Just, just Facebook was still sort of fairly new. And I shared the news about this free workshop. Over 40 people showed up to this free workshop. Most of them I did not know. Uh, we had a fantastic workshop. And it was in that moment I said, you know what, I think I can do something here. Two weeks later, had my first class. 18 people showed up to that first class. And I said, okay, I think there's something. Even though I was nervous, I was afraid, I wasn't sure because here I am running uh, an acting class under my own banner. It wasn't part of a school or anything. Right. I was completely taking control and charge. And um, I had to build my confidence. I had to as really, really, as a teacher, and really look at what my self worth and value was. And I realized that I had a lot to offer, you know, in terms of my approach and some of the lessons that I had learned from my own spiritual teacher, which actually, when I incorporated that, it, it really, really. Um, went into a much greater place. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing what you got for us because I mm -hmm. understand we're going to do an exercise. Yes. <clears throat> so bring it on. Bring it All on, right. baby. Bring All it right. on. So I'm going to take my glasses off for this oh one. Oh, my you know? goodness. He has to take the his glasses, glasses off. come off. All right. All right. So um, we're going to do this in a fairly short amount of time. Okay. But what I ask you is though we're live right now, people are watching you, mm -hmm. that you be as honest and po you know as honest as possible as okay. you can be. So close your eyes for a second. Okay. And I want you to think about Today and how you got here, your morning coffee, your morning tea, the mm -hmm. makeup while it was being put on. Mm -hmm. I want you to let go of all of that stuff because that has nothing to do with this moment. All right, I'm gonna meditate now. <laughs> <laughs> now, okay, I, want you, yeah. I want you to think about. I want you to think about um, the one thing that gets in the way of your success. If you could see what that person, that group of people, that thing, if it's an entity, you decide what it is. But if you can just take a moment to look at that for what it is and be honest, even though we're on live TV, okay? Can you see it? Uh-huh. Can you imagine what you would tell this person, this group of people, this entity, this thing, what you would tell it? Uh -huh. You've arrived at a place now where you are finally standing up for yourself. And this thing that sta stands in your way can no longer stand there because you've got things you've got to do. Can you imagine what you would tell it? Mm -hmm. Okay. In a few seconds, I'm going to ask you to open up your eyes. In front of you, there's a piece of paper, there is a pen, and this is not about proper spelling, this is not about it being perfect. 
You have literally 60 seconds to write down exactly what you would tell it. This is you creating your own original monologue. And while you do that, I'm going to talk to the people as you're doing it. Mm -hmm. When 60 seconds are up, we're going to jump right into it. But we'll get to that in a second. Okay. Here we go. Open your eyes and begin. So folks at home that are watching, um, right now Rena is basically creating her own original monologue based on something that I've shared with her. In my classes, everything that we work on is original material that you, the student, creates. So none of it is scenes from plays in the past or you know, once in a while it might be a scene or a monologue or even a commercial co copy that I might provide from my studio, but most of it is you. And the reason I have you create original material is because this is a great opportunity for you to take full control of your moment and realize that you are more than just an actor, that there's a lot of confidence, a lot of gold waiting inside to come out. A lot of times we're afraid. We've allowed society and the world to tell us to dictate who we are. And so we hide. But during this process, you can actually be completely honest and stop. So. <laughs> <laughs> Everything stops. You see what yeah, happens? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of energy just. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All yeah. right. So take a moment mm -hmm. and just read for us aloud that piece that you just wrote. <clears throat> The ceiling will be busted, for I am not a conformist. I wish the judgment that taunts me didn't become equivalent to my financial gain. Now, this is great. You wrote this in 60 seconds, okay? You didn't think about it. What you did without realizing it is that you trusted yourself. Now, if I had asked you to write this and give it to me in a couple days, you might have called me on the second day and you say, you know what, Victor, what is it you want from me exactly? So now you have this. You did this because you trust yourself. This is part of your self-worth, your value. Now, who are you talking to when you read this? To the people that judge me. The people that judge you. Mm -hmm. You can see who they are. Yeah. Now, can you, in your mind, you don't have to tell me this, do you, are you clear on what you want from them? Imagine that they're there. They're right in the camera. Mm, all right. Do you know exactly what you want from them? Yes. Okay. So now I want you to see them. Mm-hmm. And now that you know what you want, mm -hmm. I want you to actually go for it. Okay. So let that be the thing, the driving force for the words that you've written here on paper. Okay. So um, really all I'm looking for is that you support and trust my process. No, you're going to read what's on the script. Oh, I'm going to write. Okay. Yes, oh, what God. you've written. I'm like, hey, yeah, I'm waiting. Support yeah. me. No, no, That's no, no, what no. I need. <laughs> so see them for a second. Okay. See them for who and what they are. All right. This is what it is. This is real. Okay. Now you're going to express what you've written with that intention. Be honest about it. Okay. Here we go. Mm hmm No fuimo. The ceiling will be busted, for I am not a conformist. I wish the judgment that taunts me didn't become equivalent to my financial gain. How'd that feel? Interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was interesting. I mean, they didn't do a solo shot, so you were in the shot, so it didn't feel That's like okay. it. That's okay. But it, it, because it kind of felt like, Do we oh, have okay. time for a solo shot? I don't know, but it's all. Do we have no, time for a solo we don't. shot? My director just whispered in my all ear, right. we don't. Okay, so, so quickly what we did here. You trusted yourself. You wrote your own piece. This is beautiful. This is gold. It came from you. Secondly, once you discover who you're talking to and what you want, you give that information to your body, your body follows and you immediately start to do what you came to do versus getting nervous, right. getting caught up in your brain, and doing something else. So this is just one of the lessons we teach right. in my I class. I appreciate that, Victor, and I thank you. And I got to say, you know, I love what you bring out in me, and um, I hope you guys enjoyed his acting lesson with me, and um, I allowed myself to let go and be free. And, um, yeah, but I understand your acting classes are by invitation only. No, so the <clears> beginner, so we have three courses now. I've just added the... Um, the advanced course. That's the only course that's by invitation only because at the end of that course, we do an industry showcase where you present work in front of the industry, okay. casting directors, agents, managers. Okay. The beginner and the intermediate, 
you can sign up to it at any point. Our next set of classes are kicking off on October 30th. And they can find that on your website. Yes, you can all go right. to victorcruzactingstudio.com. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> I know, we went over. That's all right. Oh my gosh, everybody's <laughs> in on it. All right, for acting lessons with Victor Cruz, please make sure to visit the his victorcruzactingstudio.com. That's his website, victorcruzactingstudio.com. Stay tuned, Bobby C's Weekly Sports Roundup is coming up next.